Steve Gill Show. Hey, welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show and uh, Governor Bill Haslam, Governor of the State of Tennessee, in studio with us today. Longtime friend of both him and his family. And did, I mean, again, back in the day, never even you weren't a political guy. I mean, when we were in in high school and and when you were in, even in Knoxville, you know, in in early days in college and and uh, and after college, you weren't really active in the political. Arena. You were a business guy. Yeah, no, I really. I mean, if you had asked me, even. You know, ten or twelve years ago, would I be in politics? I would have laughed until I really got serious about thinking about running for mayor. You know, two two thousand one, two thousand two. It was definitely not high on my radar screen. That executive experience of being mayor is is a great stepping stone into the governor's office. I mean, you've got folks that are in Congress or in the legislature; they vote on a lot of different stuff. Mayors, business guys, you're accountable for, at the end of the day, producing something, which is, again, when you look at the presidential race, is one of the reasons you've backed, I think, Mitt Romney. There's an experience that comes as a governor that translates to president that, that legislatively maybe doesn't fit as well. I think what you learn as an executive, whether it be business, mayor, or governor, is this. N- number one, it's just like the real world. Revenues and expenses have to balance. And you can't, you don't have the liberty of saying, oh, I don't like this, or I, I do. You, know, you, have to, you have to make it work. So, number one. Number two, you have to hire great people and you learn really quick whether it be business government coaching a football team coaching a basketball team running a hospital whatever it is it's the team with the best players wins and so i'm i'm committed to that idea it was when we hired our uh, our cabinet of getting the very best people and then pushing them to get the very best people Th- that's the sort of thing that you learn and so i think sometimes when you look at campaigns there's a message there that those that are best organized with the best team of people um they tend to produce the best results and that might tell you more about the candidate even than a lot of the policy discussions that you have i know in uh, in talking to a lot of your uh, your cabinet officers who are good friends, some of them have been shocked coming from out of government. <laughs> at, I mean, the, the bureaucracy is as bad as the red tape, the just slow movement of getting stuff done, as bad as they always thought or worse. Has the same been true for you to come from outside to in? It, I think one of the things that, 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 that people are first struck by is um, civil service laws, which were put in place in government for a good reason, to, to keep people from just being, bringing all their political buddies. But the, the cure for that has become way worse than the disease ever was in the sense of now what you have to do to hire somebody in the state of Tennessee, what you have to do if you want to uh, uh, demote or discipline or lay off that person is incredibly uh, archaic and bureaucratic. And I think a lot of people who come into business go, really, this is how, coming from business, say, really, this is how it works? If it's all about getting the best player so that I can serve my customer the best, whether you're getting a driver's license or trying to adopt a child, if it's all about getting the best players, we're not set up to do that. And that's really not fair to the people who pay us, and that's the taxpayers. And then that's that's been a big part of the debate on education as well. How do you keep and reward the best teachers, and at the same time either correct the teachers that aren't getting it done, or get them out of there because every year that it goes on is another several hundred kids, 30 kids per classroom, four or five classes a day. They're doing a lot of damage to a lot of kids with every year you delay either improving them or getting them out of there. It's interesting. Uh, a, a team of economists from Harvard and Columbia, so not exactly a hotbed of conservatism, but came together to study the impact of one teacher. They studied millions of students going back uh, way back to the 60s. Uh, and the, the difference of one year, a fourth grade teacher of somebody in the bottom 10%, just from somebody in the average, the an average teacher, bottom 10% to average, the lifetime earning capacity of that classroom was about $1.3 million difference from one year with one teacher. And the odds of where that child ended up pregnant as a teenager, whether they ended up going to college, all those things are impacted. So we have to all come back to agree to the fact that the quality of the teacher is makes all the difference in the world. And we can't live with accepting a uh, People who shouldn't be in front of our teach of our students, and yet you know, with the education reforms that were put in last year, already you've got the teachers' union, the TEA, wanting to backtrack, complaining about the standards that are in place before we've even seen the results. Well, that's what we've argued. You know, there was an evaluation plan put in place, actually, really from the result of two or three years ago with uh, Governor Bredesen race to the top, an evaluation plan, then a committee set up to come up with what, how the formula would work. Uh, and my argument has been: let's get w- at least one year of the evaluations in place 
place before we decide that you know that we're going to do major surgery on it. Now we're going to evaluate the evaluation, if you will, and we'll make certain that it's right because it has to be right for us. But to 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 uh, to throw everything out of the boat so quick is just wrong. The the other area that that seems to maybe be some some room between you and some of the legislatures uh, legislators is on the issue of taxes. You talked about wanting to do something about the estate tax, which Tennessee is a great place to live and work and raise a family. Right. Just a lo- horrible place to die because exactly. your family doesn't get what you earn. <laughs> You're wanting to change that. Others are arguing that the the uh, um, hall income tax, which which taxes investment earning, right. is where they'd like to target. Let's eliminate that one first. I mean, there's a good argument for either one. You'd ultimately like to do both. It's just we don't have the money. Right. Right. One, uh, the estate tax is a total of about eighty five million dollars a year that brings in revenue to the state. I think the hall income tax is a lot more. It's like three hundred million. Uh, so it's it's really what can we address first? I, I do think the estate tax is literally chasing people away who look and say, hey, I'm 65. It's cheaper to die in Florida. I'm going to still live in Tennessee, technically, maybe, but I'm going to move my residence down there. But then once they do that, they tend to take their capital down there and invest down there instead of here where we need it. And if you have a family farm, you can't move that to Florida. So you're stuck, and you might have to sell it to pay the taxes, and that's wrong. And particularly when you're seeing the, the dramatic growth in the suburban areas around right. Memphis, around Nashville, around Knoxville, and, right. and Chattanooga as well. Right. As those areas grow, the value of those family farms go up. And if you're operating them as a farm, right. you can't keep doing that. You've got to sell it, which again takes more of our farmland, more of our food production away that's as what well. what we want. Right. When you look at the legislative session that's that's already underway, what are the other hot button issues, or what are the topics you think are going to occupy a lot of your attention? Uh, well, a little play on words there. That one of the things we're talking about was with Occupy Nashville, but I don't know what that I'd call that a hot button itch issue. Um, I, I think I think there are several things. Where a lot of things around um, around education. We have a couple of proposals, and then some people who want to talk about the evaluation system. Uh, I think the the issue we brought up with the civil service, what we call the Team Act, to make certain that we have, we can hire and keep the very best people, uh, will be a will be a big issue with us this year. The budget always is, and budget should be. I mean, how you spend your money is a reflection of your priority. So so far, we've gotten pretty good consensus around our budget, and we hope to obviously. To, to get it the rest of the way home, probably with a few tweaks, but mostly uh, mostly as designed. The economic issues continue to dominate both the national right. and state level. Uh, social issues kind of taken a little bit of a back seat. You know that is an area that sometimes you get some criticism is that you're not as socially conservative as as some uh, in the Republican Party, some in the state of Tennessee might like. That kind of takes a back seat until the economy gets gets improved. Do you see some areas where you're you're reaching out and maybe making some ground ground move into the social Conservatives. Well, I mean, I mean, if you look, uh, we did uh, do a couple things that we promised we would do. Uh, we made certain the state no longer funded Planned Parenthood this past year, and they're suing us now. Uh, we uh, have they're put SJR 127 to uh, restrict abortions uh, that'll be on the uh, constitutional ballot in 2014. So we're, we're making some headway there as well. So the idea that you're liberal, Governor Bill Haslam, is not necessarily <laughs> borne out by the fact. My friend always gives a visit. Good to see you, Steve. We'll Thanks, see you again man. soon. We'll be back with more in just a few moments. This is the Steve Gill Show. Thank you.